Hello everybody, this is Dream Gamer back for round four of Group H. Group H shaping to be a very open group as well. At, f at first, we will see Blood Moon the Not So Bully going up against MEJP10. Dinosaur Queen 777 taking on Lauren Steele. And then Danex Tactile going up against Windless the Puck. So yep, yeah, without further ado. Let's get on with our first matchup, which could be an important one between Blood Moon and MEJP10. Right, in the red corner for Blood Moon, we got, yep, the T Rex. A win here for Blood Moon will guarantee their place in the last 32 round. And, well, it depends on what this T Rex does. Like, if this T Rex gets off a lot of hits, then yes, Blood Moon will win this match. However, in the blue corner for MEJP10 is an Alpha Kentrosaurus. MEJP10 not out of this group yet. But a win would thrust them right back in the mix. Defeat here, and yeah, it could be over actually. <laughs> yes, why I say it depends on what this T Rex does is because Emmy does have a type advantage with their second dino against Blood Moon's second dino, so. Yes, it's key on what this T-Rex can do. Well, it's a tie. Triggers the Quake Saber. And the Quake Saber be activating. And a tie bomb to come. Just the start MEJP10 would have wanted. Not the start Blood Moon would want, though. This T-Rex has been quite the sweeper so far, though. Well, look at that. Doesn't look like there's going to be sweeping anyone's team this time. Well, it didn't last time, let's be honest. Ooh, gets off the Magma Blaster, though. I believe this T-Rex is Counter-type as well, so this is going to do big damage to the Kentrosaurus. Oh, look at that! Even Stevens, both of our combatants getting off big hits. But it's Kentrosaurus taking out the T-Rex! Just what any would have wanted. The T-Rex only getting off one hit. And Blood Moon is 1-0 behind. And might be in trouble here. Because, as I said, this Baryonyx will be at a tight disadvantage against any second dino. Which is a Pentaceratops, I might add. So yes, Blood Moon in a bit of a pickle again. Can they get out of it? Well, they got to get past the Kentrosaurus first. Will MEJP10 get a second win in this tournament? Really put the cat amongst the pigeons. Well, quick as a way, Kentrosaurus dispatch, and we are level pecking. But as I said, this is, this is the matchup that Blood Moon would not want. Baryonyx taking on this Pentaceratops. Yeah, this could be a key matchup here. If MGB10 can get some momentum, get the hits going. Then yeah, I think they will win this match. And they got a Super Barry in third as well, so... Spots to play for here. Oh, it's a tie! Wow, even ties favour the Pentaceratops. Another tie? Ooh, the Barry does get the first hit! And it's a Water Sword, but again... Oh, that's right, the Thunder Driver has been triggered, so there'll be no type disadvantage now. So normal damage will be dealt. So Blood Moon might not be in as big a pickle as we thought. But this Atomic Bomb will do damage to the Barry. Boosh! And the Thunder Driver's gonna get triggered as well. Another crit, and not surprisingly, Baryonyx is gonna go down, and Blood Moon's gonna be 2 1 behind, and MEJP10 gonna be in a good position to win this match. Right, as for Blood Moon's third dino, is a Eutoraptor. Can Blood Moon get back in this match, or can MEJP10 secure a second win in this tournament? Remember, if Blood Moon wins this match, they will secure their passage to the last 32. But it doesn't look like he's going to win. Next 
Oh, it's a tie. Ooh, is it gonna be a bonus point win for Pentaceratops? I mean, MEJB10. Oh, <laughs> Paul the Uteraptor tried to get. Oh, that's horrific. Wow, Dino Illusion getting triggered there. Look at that. Pentaceratops showing no mercy. Ooh, Blood Moon getting a hit back though. Does have the Dino Illusion for protection. Oh, it's a, well, it's, it would have been a Thunder Driver, which would have done a lot of damage, but the Dino Illusion protected Blood Moon. Oh, and the Thunder Driver's gone. What a waste. Ooh, Pentaceratops going down and Blood Moon coming back into it. It's a Mayfly. Again, kind of a waste, because the Pentaceratops would have died anyway. But at least you got a hit. Now then, as for MEJP10's third and final dino, it's a Super Duper Barry. Awaken mode on three, like everybody else? Can MEJP10 hold on to get this win, or will Blood Moon come back into it and win themselves? Oh, it's a tie. Ooh, you trapped again the hit. Blood Moon coming back. That's once. Hopefully we'll see the awaken mode. Oh, it's a hit from the Barry. That should be the losing bonus point guaranteed for MEJP10. Twice. Ah, oh, there it is. There's the win for MEJP10. The one-trick pony Blood Moon. Suffering a second straight defeat. And unfortunately, we didn't see the awaken mode again. Ugh. Ooh, that could be a big win there for MEJP10. Blood Moon misses the chance to secure qualification from the group stage. Well then, stirs things up, doesn't it? As we move on to our second match, which again is another important game between Dinosaur Queen 777 and Lawrence Steele. Rightly then, in the red corner, for Dinosaur Queen, it is an Alpha Super Minus. Both of these two, I think, have the exact same win-loss record so far in this tournament. But I believe Lauren Steele is actually above Dinosaur Queen because, well, bonus points. So this could be a much important game for both of these two to strengthen their grip on the top three. Right, as for Lauren in the blue corner, it is Super Power. Super Power Power! And yes, both of our combats are using Zoe, so this is going to be interesting. Ba -da -ba -da. Oof. I don't know who's going to win this match, to be honest. Um, I'm just... I think... I think Lauren is going to win. But it's going to be a tight... I feel like it's going to be a tight one. Well, I hope it's a tight game. <laughs> Wouldn't want a one-sided massacre, would we? Oh, that's not... Oh, oh there's the Dino Staffer. <laughs> Awaken mode on three, by the way. Just once. Ooh, it's a tie. Tie suit power power, though. It does have the green impulse. Oh, it's getting off a crit, though. Good start from Laura. Oh, that's twice. Oh, it's a tie! There's the green impulse. We're going to see the awaken mode next. This is a good start from Lauren Steele. Just stop yeah. Three for both of our combatants. Boosh! There's the awaken mode. Ah, save me the trouble of finding a screenshot. <laughs> And Dinosaur Queen striking back with her first proper attack of the match, and it's a Futaba Cannon. Well, technically she got a hit earlier, but the Dino Stuffer said no. And look at that! Back up! We're level pecking yet again! 
Ooh, but it's the Paris getting the hit. And the Alpha Super Minus goes down. Okay then, as for Dinosaur Queen's second dino is Super Taurosaurus. Taurosaurus that. <laughs> that lightning strike will definitely rip its opponents a new one. <laughs> I couldn't think of the words. Ooh, but it's Paris getting a cheeky little head there. Okay, that's once. Oh, that's a tie. Oh, it's Green Impulse again! Has Lauren turned the screw on this match? Whee! Flap! Flap! And slice! Blech. Wow, that was loads of damage! Taurosaurus not looking good at all! Okay, well, <laughs> I messed up the clicking, but it doesn't matter because they all do the same damage! Click the awaken mode! <laughs> Almost forgot to click it then, right. And the good thing is that the Taurosaurus is on the left, so I'll be clicking Dinosaur Queen's moves first. Well, ideally, well, a tie wouldn't really matter. It's kind of wasted, to be honest. Oh, didn't get a hit anyway. Look at this from Lauren Steele. Turning the screw on this match and having a 2-0 lead. But do not count Dinosaur Queen out yet. She does have the powerhouse that is Sorofaganax. And Lauren's second dino is a wind dinosaur. And well, we all saw in the first match against the not-so-bully Blood Moon. What a type disadvantage can do. Well, what a type advantage can do, especially if you're a fire dinosaur against a wind dinosaur. So don't count Dinosaur Queen out yet. Oh, it's a tie. I tell you what, since the first match... Lauren's were really solid. Really solid. It was only the first match against Blood Moon where she got basically annihilated. Right then. As for Lauren's second dino, it's a Carnotaurus. And as I said, this Carno has the tight disadvantage against the Faganax. So, while Lauren does have the lead, Dinosaur Queen can easily pull it back. So I wouldn't put this match in the books yet, and we have had some comebacks. Ooh, a tie. Well, at least Dinosaur Queen doesn't have to worry about Green Impulse anymore. Well, here's a hit, but again, look how little damage it's going to do. Yeah, see what I mean? Type advantage can be a killer in this, in this match. In these matches. Another tie. Although, Lauren has guaranteed herself at least a losing bonus point. But at this point, I think she's going to win. Oh, oh, it might be enough. It is a ninja attack and it does have a lot of power in the crit. I think this is going to be enough to get the bonus point win. Yep, there it is. It's a bonus point win for Lauren Steele. How big could that be And that will in fact put her on top of Group H. Fascinating, it well, it puts her on top for now, and I think, given Blood Moon's defeat as well, might secure her place in the last 32. But yeah, Lawrence, you're looking really good after that first round defeat. As for Dinosaur Queen 777, didn't quite happen. You know, couldn't, lost a lot of momentum there with the uh, Taurosaurus, but you know, there we go. That's match numero two done. Now on to another important game in this group between Danex Tactal and Windless Lapo. Alrighty then, in the red corner for Danex Tactal, it is a Uluru Titan. Danex Tactal ended Blood Moon's winning start last time out. Can they heap more misery on Lapo? Well, I, th I think Danex Tactal will win this match. If I'm honest. Looking at the teams, look at the matchups, I think Danex Tactal will win. Although, stranger things have happened in this tournament. In the blue corner, for Lepoke, we got an Abelosaurus. Lepoke yet to win in this tournament. Hasn't got going at all, and it really hasn't happened. But can they get a win? It, I don't think they will win this match, to be honest. But you never, again, you never know. It could happen. It can be done. Especially as you saw in the first match. Danix Tactical looking vulnerable. 
but has definitely sharpened up, sharpened up in the last two matches, I might add. Hmm, there's a crit. Just the start Lapoke would have wanted. Ooh, there's a tie. Ooh. Well, this is just the start, as I said, Lapoke would have wanted. A fast start from the Abelosaurus. And a 1-0 lead. Can this be the game that Lapoke wins? I should also point out a win for Danex Tactile will take them through to the last 32. Alright, as for their second dino, it is a Yangtronosaurus. This Yangtronosaurus does have the type advantage over Lapoke's second dino. So Danex Tactile is easily capable of getting back in this match. And well, this Yangtronosaurus has been pretty solid for Danex Tactile so far. Really, really strong, so wouldn't bet against it pulling it back for Danex Tactile, yeah? Oh, they're not doing it so far. Look at this from the Pope. Get another hit on the board. Slippy, slippy, slap, slap. And kick. Boosh. Well, the Pope finally getting a hit in this match. Yangchungasaurus striking back. Oh, oh, the Pope getting another hit here. Another Strufio rush coming in too. Will we see Volcano Burst? Oh, we will! Well, this is just the performance the Pope has needed. And they're going to need to keep it up if they want to get their first win of this tournament. Oh, could that be a turning point? It's a crit from the Yang. A crit block to come. Could that be the turning point? Oh, it's a tie, but again, that suits the Yang. Oh, it's another tie! Oh, well, well, the Yang is dead, as is the Abelosaurus, so I'll just, I'll just give the Sejuang a free hit here. Because, as you saw, the Yang Chungosaurus would have died. But, at least Abelosaurus is dispatched off. Right, as for Lapoke's second dino is a Sejuangosaurus, and they have avoided the bad matchup with the Yang Chungosaurus, which was crucial. So Lapoke's still in the driving seat here. Okay, I'll just give him the... There's the free hit. Because, again, the Yang Chungosaurus would have died in that tie. However, do not count Danax Tactile out yet, because they do have... Bromtokits, and well, if Tokenite's matches or anything to go by, do not underestimate the power of this beast, capable of winning it for Danex Tactile on its own. Oh, it's a tie! Ties will suit the Sejuang though. As will that hit. Can the Pope do it? Can they get the win? Aqua Vortex getting triggered there, which means Ties will favour the uh, Brontokins now. Oh, what? Speaking of Ties, there's the Aqua Vortex, and they go all of Sejuangosaurus's moves, including Dino Illusion. Good hit there from Danex Tactor. Splishy, splishy, splash. The bar is filling up. Ooh, but the Pope does get another hit on Brontokins. Guarantees the losing bonus point. But I'm sure at this point they're probably eyeing up a bonus point win. Oh, are they going to get it though? It's Ocean Panic. Well, ideally, they, well, they got no points so far, so they do need the bonus point win. But it doesn't look like they're going to get it. Ah, the shockwave effect didn't activate. How costly could that be? Well, not very costly so far, because a hydro cut is going to finish off Sejuangosaurus. 
and probably end Lapoke's chances of getting out of this group now. I mean, they might still win this match, but they needed the bonus point win and they're not going to get it. Right, as for Lapoke's third dino, it is a Patsaurus, the secret one. Can Lapoke secure their first win of the tournament though? Can they still they can still do it? And they well they they've at least guaranteed that they'll get off the mark, so they won't finish on zero. Oh is it enough? Is it enough? Better get any wits about me. It might not be enough though, because of what the move is. Okay, yeah, I think it is actually gonna be enough. I think LePoke has done it. Yeah. There it is. LePoke getting the first win of the tournament. It might not be enough to get him out of the group, but... Again, I'll have to double check the table to be sure. But at least they've got a win in this tournament. At least they're off the mark. It, again, it might not be enough, but, you know, a very good win there for LePoke. As for Danix Tactile... Like Blood Moon earlier, a chance missed to get out of the group. And in fact, I think that result might have just shake, shake, completely shaken up how Group H will look going into Round 5. So let's find out. Well, the Poke still in it. Still in it just. Only just, mind you. They'll probably need a 3-0 win to get out of the group. As Well, they could they get through? Let's have a look at the final round fixtures. So it'll be Lepoque going up against Emmy. So if Lepoque gets a 3 0 win there, they'll go to 8. They'll be above Danax Tactile because they beat them. And then Lauren has to play. No, and then 4 versus 2. So it'll be Dinosaur Queen against Blood Moon. No. Well, it could end in a draw. Yeah, it's, it's a long shot, but Lepoque still has a slight chance of getting out of this group. But again, it's a long, long shot. But yes, look at this. Lauren Steele, top of Group H, going into the final round. And I would probably say... Let's have a look. If Emmy gets a 3-0 win, say Danix Tactile wins, they go above Laura. And then... Yeah, it's, it's not guaranteed, but she's pretty much 90% through. Because if Blood Moon wins their match against... Who they play? Against Dinosaur Queen, that'll put them level on points with Lauren, but because Blood Moon again won their matchup, they'll go above Lauren. If Danix Tactile gets the win against Lauren, they'll, again, they'll go above her. And if MEJP10 gets a 3-0 win, then they will go above her, so she'll be fourth. But yeah, this, <laughs> again, a, quite a long shot, so... I'm not saying that these three won't win in the final round. I doubt Emmy will win 3-0, though. That's, that's the big stipulation. So, yeah, I think Lauren is pretty much through. But, yeah, look how tight it is. All up, all to play for you. Danix Tactile and Blood Moon level on points. But, again, by virtue of the fact that Danix Tactile beat Blood Moon, they are above them. And then Emmy JP10 getting a win to really strength, really give themselves a fighting chance again out this group. And then Dinosaur Queen still in it. So, yeah, again... Okay, for Dinosaur Queen to go through, she would need to obviously beat Blood Moon, which would take her up to 9 points. Yeah, just hope she wins, and then Danix Tactile gets beaten by Lauren. Actually, no. A win would do it. Providing that Emmy doesn't beat Lepoke. So yeah, just a win for Dinosaur Queen 777. So yeah, all at the play for. Plenty to play for in Group H going into the final round so yeah hope you enjoyed if you did please leave a like subscribe do that stuff that people do and stay tuned for next time where we conclude round four with group i and until then this is strange gamer signing out <laughs>